Hello, I'm Beth the Builder, and I'm back doing more honest home repairs. So, I talked about in my live stream, I think, that pretty much everything in my house, trim wise, needed help, needed repair, needed wood filler, needed to be replaced, or needed to be painted. Pretty much everything in my house needed to be painted, honestly. So, painting trim, I think. There's some tips and tricks. I've painted a lot in my lifetime so far. I think it's a really easy DIY project to really like make a space your own and like clean something up. So you can have an old house. This is some advice from my mom who has lived in more old houses than anyone I know. She always said like, you can have an old house, but it can't also be dirty <laughs> and cluttered. So you can have like old trim and things that like, yeah, you know, they're old, but it can't also be dirty. <laughs> and I think paint is where like that really comes in handy. So like you can clean something up and then paint it and it looks like 10 times better because it looks like it's been cared for. And like having scummy, cracked, flaked paint trim or walls or whatever just makes for an old home to look really shabby and dirty and gross. So like our kitchen, when we finally got around to painting that, I painted all the trim because it was so like, there's just something about kitchen trim that can feel so grimy. And I got the best paint I could get <laughs> because especially being in an old house, you want that paint to friggin' adhere. So I'm against anything that's below gloss pretty much, maybe matte, if you're just painting walls, like that's fine. But anything below that, like that eggshell flat bullshit, don't even bother because it's not gonna clean up. You can't wipe anything off the wall, it's stupid. So it's eggshell, flat, matte, and then you get into gloss. Any trim you're gonna do, go for semi-gloss. Don't around with anything else because it's, it's not worth it. Um, you're gonna be disappointed, especially in an old house, it's gonna go poorly. So for my trim in my house, I've gotten white, this is ultra white right now. And one time in the last three and a half years, I accidentally bought the wrong, like a different shade of white to keep painting trim. And boy, was that a mistake. So make sure you match your whites because it does matter, which is annoying because there's like 17 bajillion different shades of white. Um, so this is ultra white semi-gloss paint. You can just buy a gallon of it already ready to go at whatever hardware store. And a lot of my trim needs to be repaired. So I've used caulk to fill gaps. It's a, um, let me grab it for you. I like swear by this stuff. So it's all purpose painter's caulk and it's the best. This is an Ace brand, which is my hardware store in town, but I would honestly go with the DAP. Um, this stuff is not, I'm not impressed by the Ace brand. Sorry, Ace, I'm just not. DAP is definitely the way to go and you can get the same stuff. It's painter's caulk. It's like Alex painter's caulk or something like that. It's the best for filling cracks in trim. So especially in old houses, things crack and settle and they just form little like hairline cracks or trim starts to separate from other pieces of trim. Like, so get that painter's caulk and caulk the shit out of it. You can get a cool little tool. Mine's dirty right now, but you can get one of these guys. They're so handy. Um, I think I did a really early, it was one of my earliest videos. I did one about caulking and I don't know, that video was probably, you know, I was a noob. I still am, but I've learned a lot about making videos. Anyway, I did a whole video about caulking and this is a tool that I got really early on when we bought our house and it's like so useful. I do end up just using my hand. Um, sometimes I'll wear gloves if I'm gonna be just like up on ladders and I don't wanna mess around with like having this stupid tool with me. And it is not advised to like be having caulk on your fingers and stuff like that, but like every, handyman, construction person, etc. knows. You just can't be too worried about it. Obviously, you don't want to be eating it, but it's it's gonna get on your skin. It's just kind of like unavoidable. So, but this little tool is really helpful, especially if you're a noob for caulking, because you're not gonna be very good at it when you're a noob. I'm really good at caulking. <laughs> I'm just gonna say it. I was good at it to begin with, and I'm really good at it now. I don't know why. It's just a weird skill I have. And caulking's not hard, but there's some tricks to it. This tool will help you out, especially when you're a beginner. Get the painter's caulk and caulk all those like little gaps in the trim. And then secondly, get some wood putty. I also talked about this in a wood putty video that was really early on in Beth the Builder. I haven't been around that long, but you know, 
So this is Durham's Rock Hard Water Putty. And it's a powder and you can mix as much as you want and you can make it to the consistency you want, which I really, really like. If there's just some like funny hairline cracks or you just wanna smooth something out, you can make it a little bit thinner or you can make it really thick and like really, really like jam it into a crack. Um, I think it says it's not advisable for cracks bigger than a half inch or something, but I've used it for that and it really just takes a couple extra coats to like fill it in. Anyway, but it's like so useful. It says like indispensable to woodworkers, electricians, carpenters, repairmen, housewives, pattern makers, decor decorators, floor finishers, cabinet makers, painters, manual training school. So basically it's for everybody, especially housewives. <laughs> so like it's super cheap. You get this entire container and then you can just mix however much you want. Cause I have other putty that like eventually like it's in a little tube and eventually like it just hardens in the tube if you don't use it fast enough, which is really annoying. Cause sometimes you only need like a tiny amount this is the best. I love it. Um, doesn't shrink. It's sandable. It is like really dusty when you sand it. So you want to wear like protective material because it will like irritate the shit out of your eyes and your face and skin and everything. But it's so handy. 10 out of 10 best wood putty. And I've used it. So on my windowsills, a lot of them have like 17 layers of paint. So I've used it to patch a lot of the cracked paint because I'm not gonna get 17 layers of paint off of it. I'm not gonna do that. So to kind of fill the holes to build up where that paint has flaked off, cause some of it's probably full of lead and try and seal that, I'll use this wood putty and smooth it out and then like lightly sand it <laughs> because I don't wanna like crack any more of the paint below and then I'll paint it. And you can get like a super, super good finish. Um, I've done it in my porch. I've done it other places where like the wood was just like up <laughs> from scratches, from wear and tear, from dings, from the like wood, you know, expanding and contracting over the years. And it does a really good job. And you can put multiple layers on really quickly. It dries within like, I think like 20 minutes or something. It dries so fast. Boy, howdy, I can't sing its praises enough. And that along with the painter's cock, like those two things in my house have been like indispensable and they're cheap and I think anyone can use them. All my trim in my living room is probably some of the worst. People were putting the like cold weather plastic film over the windows, I think in the winter. So there's like layers of adhesive, like sticky tape residue left on a lot of the trim, which just makes it look like nasty. And it's been such a pain in the ass to get off. I think I spent like multiple evenings a couple years ago, like just trying to scrape away adhesive using like Goo Gone and soap and scrubbies. It was a mess. So I think I've gotten most of the adhesive off and then all the trim at the bottom, which I've showed you guys when I pulled up that vinyl flooring in my living room here is such a mess. It also needs some TLC. I've cocked this good like six foot strip here and I'm gonna paint this and paint this window trim. Just kind of showing like just some caulk and paint how much it'll like make a huge difference with how it looks. That before it looks kind of like, that looks dirty and gross. And after it'll be like, oh, that looks pretty good. Even though the floor is a little rough. So painting trim is not my favorite thing. I love painting big old walls because it feels like such a drastic change for the room. Painting trim is like, ugh, what a drag. I've used different paint guides and trim paint trim things. Like you can get like the plastic things this one's shitty but like that type of thing and there's little paint guides or plastic and you hold them against where you're painting i don't think they're really useful like the paint fluffy guide things where you dip them in paint and then you like along the edge i don't think that's worth anyone's time <laughs> so i think getting like a decent paintbrush doesn't have to be super fancy painter's tape and then just keep a rag around okay and just you know what it's not gonna be perfect. And if you watched my video about painting straight lines, you'll know that painter's tape is not meant to be left on for days and days and days, or even hours. You wanna paint that shit, preferably away from the tape edge, and then you wanna wait maybe 15 minutes and then pull the tape up. Because if it sets against the paint line, it's not useful. Like it's not gonna do its job, which is bullshit. And I think very annoying because like there's no directions on paint tape. Everyone just puts it on and then they're like, why didn't that work? So I don't know. I mean, I do know now, but for a long time I didn't know. And I was like, why is paint tape so garbage? But I would like, you know, tape a room 
and then you do two coats for your trim over two days potentially and then pull up the paint tape and you're like what the heck this looks terrible that's not the way to do it so i might not tape really much of anything because i hate taping and i'm pretty confident that it's gonna be okay so those are my tips and tricks cock wood putty get a good brush and get some tape for certain areas you're gonna want it but don't rely too heavily on painter's tape that's my hot take on painter's tape so i have filled my holes i've cocked this trim here i've also cocked an edge underneath here that's a little, there's a little bit of a gap which no one's gonna see but since i'm doing it you might as well clean up all those edges so um that, part, that stuff is all probably dry let's see yeah um, the painter's cock dries within like, I don't know, 20 minutes, I think, 15 minutes. Okay, well this brand says, allow to dry two hours. Sure. <laughs> but the DAP brand, you can get one that like, it's like paintable within like half an hour or something, which is way nicer. I think that covers all my bases, paint, cock, wood putty. So let's get to painting. So everything over here has two coats on it and I'm not worried about getting a little bit of the blue on top because I have lots of this blue left to touch anything up and I needed to fill that line in with caulk so it's not a big deal. But I feel like you can already see like how much better this looks. Obviously the lighting is a little bit different because when I was trying to paint this and film it, it was bright daylight out which is really hard to film a window. <laughs> and pick everything up around the window and not the window, it's difficult. Um, and now it's a little bit darker out so you can kind of maybe see some of it a little better, but it does make a huge difference. Like this trim was nasty. So at some point when somebody tried to fix this floor by putting some kind of stain on top of what was there or something, the trim and even parts of the walls had the stain splattered up onto it. And when the floor was covered, and we were like cleaning things and moving in. We were like, what are on these walls? Like what is going on? And it wasn't until I tore that floor up that I was like, oh, it's stain. That was just splattered all over, which is just ridiculous and so unnecessary. So I know in the future that I will probably have to redo painting this very, very bottom bit because I do want to sand this living room floor down. And over on the other side there where I showed the window and the corner trim, again, the same thing. There's two layers of tile there that needs to be ripped up. And then there's hardwood just like on this side underneath all that. 
and I know like that bottom bit of trim is different than this and I know it's not gonna survive when I try and pull the tiles up. So either trying to get this to match over there is probably the way, the way to go or something, I don't know. I don't have a plan for that yet. There's not a whole lot to do with this trim in, you know, in my living, in my house, because unless you're gonna do a whole big gut job and tear all the trim out, which by the way, is embedded into the plaster walls. You can really see it over there under the windows um, because the top trim piece, this piece here, the very, very top isn't like an inch. Over here, it's an inch. Over there, it's like a quarter of an inch. I don't know why, I don't know why it's like that. It's like that on all the trim over there. And I don't know if that's because the walls have been like plastered again or something. And so there's just less of a, a an edge on all the trim. I don't know what's going on over there, but that's kind of what you get when you buy an old house is there's only so much you can do with what's there. And unless you're willing to drop thousands of dollars. <laughs> and right now, obviously I'm not willing to do that but I do believe that painting goes a long way. And painting trim being a little bit specific about how you do it and not just slopping paint all over the floor, which has happened. I didn't do it. It's, I can find it in various places in my house. That doesn't make anything look nicer, weirdly enough. But um, get yourself a good paintbrush and get some good ass paint. And I guarantee if you have an old house, even a new house, all these things apply to a new house. It's even, it's honestly even better in a newer house or with better trim because you have better material to even work with. But those things will go a long way and they're not expensive. You can get a gallon of paint and a paintbrush for, you know, under $35. So uh, a gallon of semi-glass paint costs the same, I think, maybe within a couple dollars of matte. And it's well worth getting the better paint, more durable. It, it wipes down, well worth it. And your house will thank you for it. <laughs> It'll thank you for the better paint and you'll thank yourself when it looks way better. But yeah, I hope this encourages somebody that like painting stuff shouldn't be intimidating. Just like a couple little like tips and tricks will go a long way. Before and after pictures are gonna blow your mind of how better, how much better this looks than over there. I'm already like so much happier with this window. All the trim in my house needs to be painted. You're not gonna tackle that stuff in a weekend. It's gotta be, you know, it's gonna be an ongoing journey. All right, you can do a lot with old houses. It doesn't have to like break the bank. You don't have to replace all the trim. You can do a lot with wood putty and caulk. And those three things, boy, can they get you pretty dang far. I'll have a new video next week, and thanks for watching.